Let's now take a look at the 6 pi electron extended pi system. 135 hexatriene.
And we're ignoring the sigma system, the in-plane system. And the reason we can ignore the sigma system is because it turns out that the highest occupied molecular orbital and lowest unoccupied molecular orbital, which represent the frontier, will be the reactive orbitals. And we know that the frontier orbitals will, in fact, be part of the pi system, not part of the in-play sigma bonding system. So since the frontier orbitals, by frontier orbital theory, are the ones that are going to be involved in reactions, if you come to get electrons from this system, you're going to get them from the highest occupied molecular orbital. Molecules always donate their highest energy electrons first. And if you come to try to put electrons into this system, you're going to put them into the lowest energy orbital available to you, the LUMO, which is the other of the frontier orbitals. So if we understand what the pi system looks like, we can understand the reactivity of the molecule without worrying about the 26 other orbitals that are part of the in-play system. Chop the molecule in three, 
and we will have plus three bonding interactions with respect to carbon one and two, carbon three and four, and carbon five and six. But we have anti-bonding interactions with respect to carbon two and three, and with respect to carbon four and five. So there's one net bonding. And you'll notice that they're evenly separated. There are two more bonded interactions in pi two than there are in pi three, and two more net bonding interactions in pi one than there were in pi two. Obviously for symmetry, we're gonna have an orbital that has one net anti-bonding, and we're gonna have an orbital that has three net anti-bonding. So what does this one look like? It looks pretty much like the Lewis structure where we have high orbitals with respect to each set of adjacent hydrogens, one, two, three, four, and five, six. And this one is the highest occupied molecular orbital, so one of the reactive orbitals. Pi four needs to have three nodes. We're going to have one down in the center, but then also on the ends here. It has net bonding, well, it has bonding interactions with respect to carbon two and three, and with respect to carbon four and five, but it has anti-bonding interactions with respect to one and two, with respect to three and four, respect to five and six. So it has three of these anti-bonding interactions where there are nodes, two bonding interactions, that's one net anti-bonding. And it will look like the rest of the structure. It has pi bonds in the center. and load electrons on the ends. So you can draw a resonance structure, not a very good resonance structure, but a resonance structure nonetheless, that has a conjugated diene in the middle and lone electrons on either side, and that's what the anti-bonding orbital looks like if they're both unoccupied. So it's kind of the same situation we had Four with the diene system, where the highest occupied molecular orbital looks like this resonance structure, the one with all filled octets and paired electrons, and the lowest unoccupied orbital looks like this resonance structure, where we have lone electrons, radicals of the two X. The next orbital is going to have four nodes, and is going to look like this. here and here and here and there. So it does actually still have a bonding interaction. It has a bonding interaction with respect to the two center carbons, carbon three and carbon four, but it's anti-bonding with respect to the other four pairs. So it has three net anti-bonding interactions as it must have in order for symmetry. the highest energy orbital, pi 6 star, has no bonding interactions at all, but there are far more anti-bonding interactions than bonding interactions for this pi 5. So we know what they look like, and we can identify the two crucial orbitals, the HOMO and the HUMO, and a Lewis structure that's kind of consistent with that model. This is why the system is so stable though, pi one 
is much lower in energy for the triene than it was for the diene, and the diene was considerably lower in energy than the isolated alkene because the number of net body interactions keeps increasing. So we can do the orbital energy diagram, we can sketch the orbitals, we can identify the whole Lumo, we can calculate the bond order, we can figure out how many orbitals of each type of symmetry there are, and we could do this for any length system. 